Hey folks, uh, we're going to be covering modulus and argument of a complex number in this session. Uh, let's get started. So first we'll cover modulus. Uh, sorry, modulus. If um, z equals x plus i, y, then modulus. The way it's written is it has a little um, uh, two lines next to the letter. Kind of very similar to the um, absolute value, but just thicker lines if you can imagine that. All right, and how do we figure this out? Uh, modulus could be written as square root of x squared plus y squared. Uh, once again, the easiest way to understand this would be through an example. So let's put a number up here. So let's take z to be 3 plus 4i. And we want to calculate, calculate its modulus. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually plot uh, 3 plus 4i on an argon diagram. So there it is. And as you can see, it's uh, 3 on the x-axis, uh, which is what the x value is. And of course, that's the 3 right there. And then on the y-axis, we're going 4 up, which is the y, which is again the, the number in front of the imaginary number. So you've got 3 and 4. And we're trying to find square root of that. Now, this is you might see this quite familiar to um, Pythagoras' theorem, uh, in case it is. So we have 3 and 4 there. And if we take, if we work out the modulus of z, we're going to get square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the same thing as saying, sorry, there's x squared plus y squared, which is 3 squared plus 4 squared. And of course, that's square root of 25, which equals 5. Which means the modulus of, modulus of z in this case, for 3 plus 4i, is 5. Okay, now looking at the argument. Now, argument is the angle between um, the horizontal axis and the complex number itself. So if I want to calculate the, um, the argument of 3 plus 4i, the first thing I want to do is plot the, um, plot the complex number. Now, the horizontal axis going towards the right, okay, there's the blue line. And the green line is, of, of course, the complex number itself. And you're basically looking for the angle between the blue line and the green line. So that angle right there. And that angle is called the argument. So if I want to work out the angle of, uh, well, 3 plus 4i, the complex number, then I've got 3 on the x-axis, 4 on the y-axis, and I'm trying to figure out, well, there's 3 and 4. I know that the modulus is 5 from the previous example. I'm trying to figure out that angle there, which is theta. So if I want to figure out theta, uh, one good recommendation is use either sine or cosine. Uh, and I'll get to tan later on, why it's a bit of a hassle using tan. So you've got A, O, and H. I'm going to use the sine rule in this case. Got opposite over hypotenuse. So theta is inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse. And just working it out, just going to speed this through. I get 53.13 degrees, which means the argument for 3 plus 4i is equal to 53.13 degrees. Okay. Let's go to another example. Okay, in this example, I want to calculate the modulus and argument of 2 minus 3i. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot it. And I know on the x-axis it's 2, and on the y-axis, well, there's 2 first. On the y-axis it's minus 3, because that's the imaginary part of the number. It's minus 3, and the modulus is facing downwards. So if I was to calculate the modulus, I've got... Uh, modulus of z is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. That's 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. And that's equal to square root of 13. Which means I don't need to simplify this any further. I could actually write the modulus as square root of... Did I actually write 13? Square root of 13. Okay, and now to work out theta... I've got adjacent there, opposite there. Sorry, I forgot the 13, 3 there. That's the hypotenuse right there. Okay, 
I am going to work out theta using sine root, just basic sine. Got sine, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So we have sine of theta is equal to negative 3 divided by square root of 13. So theta is inverse sine of negative 3 divided by 13, square root of 13 actually. And that is equal to negative 56.3. Now notice it's negative 56.3 because it's going clockwise now. And if it was going anti-clockwise, it would be 360 uh, minus 56.3. Now, the reason we don't use tan is um, there are examples, um, I don't want to take too much time in this, there are examples where you might actually get um, the opposite or the wrong angle. So it's always safe to use sine and cos. Okay, one last example, guys. All right, calculate the modulus of this complex number here. Notice that I haven't actually written the complex um, modulus because those two bars basically mean modulus. So modulus of z is generally square root of x squared plus y squared. In this, square, in this case, I'm going to write it as the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So the real part is x plus 3, and the imaginary part would be y plus 4. So the modulus of z is equal to square root of x plus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared. And from this point onwards, it is basically just expanding things as normal. So you're expanding your quadratics. And don't forget the square root symbol and just leave it simplified. So in this case, it's going to be square root of x squared plus y squared plus 6x plus 8y plus 25. And that is the modulus of that complex number. All right, sorry about the long session, guys, but um, hopefully you got the idea of modulus and argument in this session. All right, thanks for watching.